Uh, this is very, 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 very important. This is a current affair. Okay. <coughs> now, regarding the public sector bank. Okay. Now, keep this in mind. Okay. We will uh, focus on the scheduled commercial banks into three categories. One is public sector bank, private sector bank and foreign banks. Then there is regional rural bank also, also there. Now, regarding the public sector bank, what I have seen is that no material have updated regarding public sector bank. No one has updated in relation to public sector bank. So, because everything happened, many things happened. So, one is that 1st April 2019, a very big event have happened. That is, two public sector banks were merged with another public sector bank. Okay. And plus, IDBI lost the public uh, sector bank status. Okay. So, there is a high possibility that they can ask you, they can, uh, and because of another reason, prompt uh, corrective action, PCA. We will discuss under the current affair part. Okay. Uh, many public sector, majority of the public sector banks were under PCA. Now, many things have happened in relation to when the new governor came into, RBI governor came, Shashi. So, we will discuss for many reasons. There is a high possibility. One area of question will be coming from the public sector banks. Okay, factual question, but you don't have any other option but to remember certain. No need to know all the public sector bank, but certain very important bank you need to keep in mind. Okay, for example, PCA banks. We'll discuss later on. Okay, so for time being, so this is the latest data. Okay, presently, presently there is only eighteen public sector banks. Presently, there is only eighteen public sector banks. What is a public sector bank? Where the government ownership, central government ownership is more than 50 percentage. So, presently this is the latest data, public sector bank. So, how? SBI. So, earlier SBI and its associates were there. Okay. Earlier SBI and associates were there. So, it SBI merger happened over a phase. Okay. In 2008, one uh, associate merged. In 2010, another associate merged. And in 2017, 1st April 2017, the remaining 5 SBI associates including State Bank of Travancore merged with SBI. Okay. So, now there is only SBI. Okay. Now, earlier SBI and 5 associates means there were 6 banks. Now, there is only SBI is there. Now, I had seen many bank, many materials showing in the net also. Even RBI also not, not updated. <laughs> it is showing uh, 27 public sector banks. So, that is how this has many things have changed okay so now it is only 18 so sbi and and along with that in this 2017 merger this 2017 merger is very very important okay 2017 merger in 2000 that is from 1st april 2017 onwards six banks were merged with sbi one five associates and bharat mahila mahila bank bharatiya mahila bank so, 6 banks, not only 5 associates, one more bank is there, Bharatiya Mahala Bank. So, that is the, that's the reason why that number of 6 have reduced. And then, 2 banks recently merged to Bank of Baroda, Bank of Baroda. And then, IDBI lost the status of a public sector bank to private sector bank. So, finally resulting in total 18, SBI 1. So, actually... Uh, RBI itself classifying uh, the bank, public sector banks into SBI. Earlier, there were three category of public sector banks. Earlier, there were three category of public sector bank. One is SBI and associates. Other is nationalized bank. And the third is other public sector bank. Get to the point. Three classification. One is SBI and associate. Now, it is not important, but have an idea. Second is nationalized banks. And third, other public sector banks. Now, what is this other, in the other public sector banks, there were IDBI Bank and IDBI Bank and Bharatiya uh, Mahila Bank. Now, both are not there. So, this category is now gone. Bharatiya Mahila Bank merged with SBI and IDBI Bank have become now private sector bank after LIC take. So, this you keep in mind. Okay. Now, regarding nationalization, you know what is privatization, right? The reverse of privatization is nationalization. Nationalization means a private company is taken over by the government. And this actually happened in USSR. USSR actually when a country becomes a socialist economy or a communist country, what happens? Government takes over everything. Okay, and you, if you have noticed one thing that 
after uh, means after when we became independent i told you our core aim of economic development was public sector led economic development so what we have done in relation to banking sector in relation to insurance sector the government have nationalized many private banks means nationalized means government have taken over many private banks as well as insurance companies that's why lic or general insurance all the major insurance companies are with the central government okay so keep this in mind so at two places okay at two time in 1969 this is very this year is very important okay these are the major events these are the major events in banking sector what is the first major event 1934 in relation to money and banking why 1934 rbi act then the next event is 49 what is that ba rbi nationalization as well as giving rbi the regulatory power then the next uh, uh, important event is uh, in relation to sbi 1955 see uh, earlier sbi was called as imperial bank of india so it was a private bank so in 1955 sbi nationalized imperial bank of india after nationalization became state bank of india then after that in 1969 this is you can see that who who is there in 1969 in 80 1980 so during her tenure 20 banks in 14 banks in 1969 so this year is very important and not only that, what she has done is in 1972 she has nationalized insurance companies also so in 1972 all the insurance companies were under government so 1969 14 private banks were nationalized in 72 insurance companies were nationalized and again in 1986 more banks were nationalized that's why I, I told you public sector banks are three category SBI nationalized banks so earlier how many nationalized banks were there 20 now how many nationalized banks are there 17 okay now we will see that the merger okay now why I am talking about because this to see even though this merger happened in first April 2019 but the news is from October onwards See from October 2018 onwards, the decision was taken in October 2018. Okay, so it's a potential question for you. This is one. This is another one. A high potential question can come from here. Okay, regarding the merger of, so they will they will trap you. They will. It's a fact. It's a fact that which all banks have merged with Bank of Baroda. They will give you all the public sector banks. But I'm telling you, this is one very 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 because already UPSC is very much interested. Whenever there is a bank merger have happened. Normally, UPSC ask questions. Okay, so I'm giving you a hint. Okay, you should know UPSC. Okay, just it's not only very simply studying doesn't uh, make any sense. Okay, should know UPSC. Okay, so once, so just have an idea. We'll see that. So in in 2004, when Global Trust Bank, when it merged with Oriental Bank of Commerce, Oriental Bank of Commerce, which is a nationalized bank, that year, UPSC asked a question later on. Means. Then in 2007, another 2017 SBI merger, you know. So before that, see again, SBI merger happened in different phases. In 2008, one bank was merged. In 2010 and in 2017, the remaining five associates and Bharatiya Mahila Bank was merged. And in 2019, two important events happened. Again, the decision was taken earlier. So the chance is that you can, and see, this question was asked in 2018. This SBA merger question was asked in 2018. Okay, so so I, one question will be from any one of these issues. That's why I shared many articles. You might be thinking that why I am sharing many articles. Okay, and especially at this last moment, what to do? <laughs> you read it if you want a question. If you want to answer it, you'll understand. There are three or four points is there. See, if you read newspaper is that now you will never forget. If you read a material, there's a chance that you will forget. Okay, news you will always will be there to helpful. That's the reason why after you should read all the articles. When you find the time, read it. It will hardly take only five minutes to read one article once you know the concept. Please, please do that. Okay. So in 2017, SBA merger year is very important. And now why I'm giving year is that already UPSC have asked question regarding chronology of events. Chronology of events not only in history. In, the, in money and banking also, UPSC have asked question regarding the major events happened in relation to banking sector. Okay. 
So, if you know the chronology, any future question comes, you can easily answer it, okay, major events. So, in 2019, after the LIC taking over of IDBI, IDBI became a private bank and then a bank and now another interesting thing, okay. Then a bank is a weak bank, weak PCA bank, Vijaya bank is a strong bank. So, a weak bank and a strong bank, strong bank means there was no problem with that bank. It was not a non-PCA bank, it was a non-PCA bank. So, a weak bank and a strong bank have been merged with a strong bank. Now, after this merger, Bank of Baroda became the second largest public sector bank, beating Punjab National Bank. So that's one information, okay. So, don't get confused. Now, after this merger, two important uh, information you need to know. One, Bank of Baroda is now the second largest public sector bank and third largest in India. Okay, so now as per this data, again uh, uh, the private, the status is now number one SBI. SBI after this merger, it is, it became the large, already it is the largest, but it is so ahead of other banks and it entered the top 50 banks in the world, global banks. So now after this merger, SBI is the only bank in, from India in the top 50. That happened after this merger. So all these information you need to know it, okay. So, keep this and I will discuss, okay. Now, so these are the 17, I will give you in the material, you can go through the material. Just read once, have an idea, there are 17 uh, nationalized banks are there, that is public sector banks are there and in that, so earlier there were 19 nationalized, see there were 20, uh, 19 nationalized bank and one other public sector bank. So, two nationalized bank were merged. So, so they will, they can ask you that, uh, from there is a, there can be a question regarding Dena Bank or Vijay Bank, okay? Or so Bank of Baroda. Please go through it. These seventeen uh, nationalized bank, which come which comes under, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Now what is uh, that's what I'm telling that there was a controversy regarding uh, this, uh, but RBI said that keep this in mind uh, when. When we say a particular thing as public sector bank, when government is the direct owner of. Now, see here in all these uh, banks, public sector banks, the real owner is the government. Real owner is the central government. Now, here what happened is that in relation to I, uh, IDBI bank, IDBI bank has purchased by, see there are two connections there, okay. Government is the 100 percentage owner of LIC, that is correct. So, this is another information. Government is the under percentage of owner of LIC. But LIC is now taking having a share of 51 percentage in IDBI bank. Now, what I told you, what is the definition of a public sector bank? Let's say I first asked you that in public segment, government should have a direct control over or direct share over more than 50 percentage. Here, it have been bypassed and Finally, actually government tried to retain that uh, status, but RBI didn't give it. RBI said that, okay, whatever happens, according to me, now, so it is upon to RBI, <laughs> that uh, this RBI said that, we'll, and if you can see that in the website, RBI website, you can see that RBI have been put under the, sorry, uh, IDBI has been put under the private sector, uh, okay, so that you keep in mind. And there have been news also, I have shared it regarding uh, the employees asking for, uh, now actually there have been a criticism that uh, if uh, earlier when it was a public sector bank, it comes under RTI. <laughs> now it is a private bank, you will escape that uh, RTI and other things. Anyway, I am not going to that part, leave it. Now come to the uh, the news, okay. What all questions uh, you can expect from this uh, three-way merger, okay. Now first important thing. So, many, <coughs> see many merger have happened, okay. If you see the SBA associate merger, SBA associate merger, that was the April 2017 merger was a different because already its associate was merging, already its associate is merging, okay. So, earlier merger have happened in relation to two banks, normally all the merger have happened in relation to one bank merging with another bank. So, this is the first time two banks have been merged with. So, this is actually one of the recommendation of 
narasimha 1991 narasimha committee reforms okay i try to understand that uh, as part of economic reforms as part of economic reforms there have been banking sector reforms have been many com narasimha committee have been appointed to give a uh, sweeping recommendation regarding the functioning of banks so one of those recommendation of narasimha committee was to merge to have only four or five large public sector banks we don't require around two dozen that time there was around two dozen public sector banks so what narasimha committee recommended is that it recommended that uh, three or four banks should be merged together and there should be only four or maximum three or four large banks and the government should leave this uh, banking business uh, remaining it should leave it but now after a long time that narasimha committee recommendation have been so you actually can see that okay in 2017 one step we have seen in sbi merger in 2019 two more banks were merged okay now what happened is that after this we already discussed bank of baroda became the second largest public sector bank and third largest in india so what is the ranking now sbi in between who is in between hdfc earlier it was icic bank now it is hdfc now this also this is very important okay dena bank was a weak bank and dena bank actually there is another thing okay the government have bypassed okay actually the new rbi there have been a criticism against the new rbi governor rbi governor the present rbi governor what he has done is yesterday there was a day for yesterday there was an article what all urjit patel have done have been reversed by the present governor for example he increased the repo rate to 6.5 percentage he has now brought down to 6 percentage from 6 to 6.5 he has done 6.5 to 6 he tried to put all the uh, means he, he uh, implemented strict rbi regulatory regulation in relation to weak banks that have been uh, that pca norms have been diluted and plus supreme court ruling <laughs> see the now the supreme court ruling have february that's sure question for you at february uh, 2018 circular on npa norms this is a sure question for you so that is actually done by urjit patel that also have been uh, i mean supreme court ruling have taken it back okay so that leave it <coughs> now see it actually from this see there are <coughs> i told you when we discuss the topic on non performing assets you know what is a net npa right what is net npa gross npa minus provisioning is net npa if you have any doubt go and revise the module on npa revise the module from that module you will get a question so expect 5 to 7 question from money and banking okay and this is the advantage if a question comes from money and banking you all can answer it even if you are zero in money and banking now it doesn't matter only thing is that you have to read the material and read the news articles and solve those questions okay so net nps so the total npa minus provision you know that rbi norm is there so if you see the three banks npa net npa net npa is too high for then a bank that's why it is called a weak bank so they are they are a loss making bank and see the capital advocacy ratio rbi have set a minimum so again capital advocacy ratio is also lower in relation to then a bank capital advocacy ratio is also very low in relation to then a bank compared to vijay bank and bank of baroda but once it got merged once it got merged things changed things change now you can see it in relation to these see bank of baroda vijaya bank and dena bank that is the merged entity okay so the total business is based on the total business turnover it became the second largest bank so in second largest public sector bank okay deposit advances etc okay now you see the uh, net np of merged entity net np is 5.71 and regarding the capital advocacy ratio cr ratio it is now merged it is 12.25 not all these things are not important just for your uh, share this article in your group they will not ask you factual information what is important in from this material you need to know is that dena bank is a weak bank on what are the criteria to say that a bank is a weak too important one is net npa or npa capital adequacy ratio again already in 2018 you pcs asked a question on capital adequacy ratio so concept question is also important concept is also important current affair is also important see 2006 question global see this is how they can trap you global trust bank has been merged with whom 
Oriental Bank of Commerce. But what they have given? Okay, so this way they can trap you. Now, regarding the second information, you don't know, but if it, actually it is regarding the taxation, okay. So, there were two important committee. One is, write down, one is Narasimhan Committee on Bank, after economic reforms, after 1991 economic reforms. Narasimhan Committee ref, uh, have been appointed to give recommendation in relation to banking sector. Kelkar Committee, Vijay Kelkar Committee on financial sector reforms, financial sector reforms, okay. So, Kelkar Committee have given widespread uh, now see actually it's a long means 1990 uh, committee that's why now it is not important for us that's why we didn't discuss also in the public finance class but this question just have an idea he has recommended direct and indirect see he said that dealing with direct and indirect tax has maintained its original recommendation including the abolition of exemption relating to housing loan okay so Kelkar committee have been appointed by the government at two times in both the committee he has said something okay what he said is reduce the tax at the same time remove exemptions remove all forms of exemptions but reduce the tax that was his general recommendation okay recommendation is that reduce the exemption uh, so reduce the tax and remove the so actually this is actually what we are planning to do in relation to direct tax code okay direct tax code what it will try to do it will it will reduce the tax it will reduce the tax, but exemption will be removed. So, this statement is correct. First statement is wrong. Now, regarding the SBI merger, okay. Now, already uh, these are the few important points regarding even though it happened in 2017, merger is very important, okay. So, keep this in mind regarding the uh, already we discussed, okay. <coughs> See, regarding the origin of uh, in, in modern history, you might have learned about presidency town right so three important presidencies were three important major what is that bombay madras and calcutta so three presidency towns were having three important banks they were merged together to become imperial bank imperial bank in january sorry in year is important not date 1921 okay so it was founded in 1806 bank of calcutta but then other three banks were there and it was merged, all the three banks were merged and it was renamed in 1921, it was called as Imperial Bank and it continued till 1955, this year I told you that, 1955 Imperial Bank nationalized and became State Bank of India, okay. Now regarding the State Bank of India, it's associate, okay, this can no doubt, State Bank of Saurashtra, okay. Now regarding the associate banks, okay, they again have some history linkage, okay. You might have studied princely states, right. So, princely states was having banks. So, if you see all the SBI associates, they are all princely states. Saurashtra, then Indore, then if you see Bikaner, Jaipur, Travancore, Patiala, Hyderabad, Mysore, all are princely states. Now, this is another thing which you can connect it, okay. So, in 2008, Saurashtra was merged with SBI. In 2010, Indoor was merged and the remaining five were merged in 2017 along with Bharatiya Mahila Bank. Okay, so this information you keep it in mind. So, date SBI nationalization is very important already. UPC have asked a question from this information. And now, why? What is the reason for this merger? Consolidation of public sector bank. Okay, consolidation of public sector bank. And why? Uh, this again in 2019 also, why there is a merger? Again. See, bank actually many banks are having huge losses, okay, and it also helps in efficiency, okay. It will have a globe. See, you can a bank will once two or three banks merge together, the economics of scale will improve, okay. In the sense that every now all the uh, the bank will be having branches in almost all part of the country, okay. So there are so basically aim is the bank consolidation, bank consolidation and make one of the uh, global bank to create a global bank to bring order in relation to public sector bank okay there will be more mergers okay once a new government comes may, many more mergers will happen and uh, hopefully that uh, in the another next five year we'll be having only four or five if we uh, if they, a reform oriented government is coming definitely that will happen now see the uh, 2009 question see in the context of independent India's economy, independent India's economy, so what do you mean by independence India's economy? After independence, okay, after independence. 
which one of the following was the earliest event to take place? What all things you know? When is this insurance company nationalization? 1972. 1972. Nationalization of State Bank of India? 55. Banking Regulation Act? 49. First five year plan? 1951 to 56. So, which is the first event to take place? Enactment of Banking Regulation. So, it is a chronology, date. Date is not um, important, but just have an idea. Very important events. Very important events you keep in mind. Okay. So, that is why I told you that this nationalization, two other nationalization, 69 nationalization, 80 nationalization. That is also important. So, since a question been asked like this, important events and dates and mergers are important for you. Now, <coughs> we know that as per the RBI norms or basal norms those who have not uh, watched the current affair on basal please watch it okay under basal norms under basal norms it is uh, mandatory for all the bank to have a minimum capital adequacy ratio a minimum capital means it shows that if a, a if a bank is having high capital adequacy ratio means it it is a strong bank. It is a strong bank. Capital adequacy ratio is one of the measure where it, it as the term itself saying that whether the bank is having adequate capital to deal with emergencies. Okay. And you have seen that public sector banks in the last means due to its inefficiency except few public sector banks many banks are loss making. They are having huge bad loans or non-performing assets. So when when the non-performing assets increases, what happens? You need to provide provisioning. Provisioning results in decrease in the capital. So, there should be infusion of capital to maintain the capital. See, what is capital adequacy ratio? Capital adequacy ratio is the minimum capital, especially the main numerator is share capital, main tire 1 capital, okay. Divided by the risk weighted asset, risk weighted asset, okay. So, when this decreases, sorry, sorry, when this risk increases, when the risk increases, the ratio decreases. So, to maintain a minimum, so what is the basal norm under the, uh, what is the minimum basal norm saying 8 percentage, basal norm, capital adequacy ratio, but what the RBI is saying 9 percentage. So, when and now new norms is going to, capital conservation buffer is also going to come. So, that is another current affair I will discuss. That is another question for you coming. You will get a question from basal norms. So, we will discuss capital conservation buffer along with. Okay. So, what I am trying to say is a minimum capital is required. So, what is happening in relation to public sector banks? That they are there. This is increasing and capital adequacy ratio is coming down. So, to increase it either through bankruptcy code we have to reduce the toxic assets or bad assets and there should be infusion of capital by the owner. Who is the owner of public sector bank? So, that is the reason why the government is infusing capital to public sector banks to maintain the. So, that is one of the reason why you know the major fight happened between RBI when Urjil Patel was the governor and government was that government was government is having shortage of fund to infuse capital. So, what the government want is that government is asking RBI to give some from its reserve 1 lakh crore or 3 lakh crore and so the government will not do anything. We will use that fund for infusing capital for public sector bank and it will maintain the capital adequacy ratio. But uh, he objected to it. Okay. So, just have an idea again. So, capital uh, this if you can see it okay after the economic reforms we have injected capital but in this phase especially uh, in the first decade, initially in the first decade, capital banking sector was capital infusion was less. But in the in the present decade, in the present decade, you can see that there is regular capital infusion. And in 2017-18, in 2017-18, a package around 2.1 lakh crore package was. So that's why, as per this package, in 2018-19, also almost 1 lakh crore capital infusion have happened. So, again capital infusion and which all banks got uh, higher capital allotment from the government. So, naturally 
government capital infusion have been given to both PCA banks as well as non-PCA banks. Okay, just have an idea why government is infusing capital to public sector bank to maintain the the minimum capital adequacy ratio. So this was the question being asked in 2000. So both the actually it was a tough question. Tough means two topics have been merged together in 2018 question, but it was an easy question. Okay. <coughs> Read the first statement and tell me whether it is right or wrong. Steady increase. So now you learn the trick. Okay. So steadily increased the last decade. Even if you don't know that information, also you will whenever you see this steady increase and steady decrease in your PC question. But again, I am telling you to the most known areas. Don't for example, Forex Reserve. I have given you an example of Forex Reserve. Okay. So that you know that one of the most important achievement of this economic reforms is a great increase from a three except other than that normally this keyword this is a keyword steady increase so it's a wrong statement okay there is no steady increase in the last decade so you have to key see the keyword also last decade of five year so first statement is wrong what about the second statement to put the public sector in order the merger of associate banks with the parent state bank has been affected that is a correct statement that's a correct statement so answer will be b Totally.